Chuck got another one. All I right. keep bringing them if you keep listening. I'm not, what, what else am I doing? The, the, the day you just turn around and exit the room, I'll stop talking about it. All right. That sounds good. Well, we're going to be talking about these for a long time then. <laughs> I got one. Yeah. Have you ever met Leo, Mio, and Gio? You know, I don't think I want to. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, they don't sound like good people. Like friendly people. They don't sound like good people. <laughs> You know, Leo meet Gio. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Listen, I got a message from Leo, Mio, and Gio. All right, we understand that uh, perhaps you are not cooperating with the fact that uh, we are protecting your organization. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody watched, grew up on TV and movies, and watched, never read any books. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> All right, so these are these are orbits around Earth, and they've been abbreviated playfully, but but legitimately. And so, if you go not too high above Earth's surface, right? So anywhere between zero and a couple of hundred miles, okay, all right, a few hundred miles, mm -hmm. and you say, "I want to orbit the Earth." There is a speed that you have to attain in order to accomplish this. Right. Okay. Isaac Newton first drew this picture where he imagined sort of a mountain at the top of the earth, like the North Pole. Right. But that, that's not important here. It's just uh, there's a mountain there. And you have a projectile being sent out horizontally right. from that mountain. And you say, well, where does it land? Well, it lands a little farther. It's a projectile. So it lands a little farther away from where it got shot out of the cannon. But suppose I shoot it faster. It'll land even farther away. Faster, even farther. And as it does this, it begins curving along with the curved Earth. Mm -hmm. Because picture this, because gravity is pulling it down. He imagined that there must be a speed with which you can send that projectile so that it goes completely around the Earth and hits you in the back of the head. Right. That speed is orbit. And once you've achieved that speed, as long as you duck, it will continue in orbit without any extra support. Okay. So what's happening is this object is falling towards Earth. In what we say free fall, it's falling towards Earth at exactly the rate that the curve of the Earth pulls away from it. So I fall five feet towards the Earth, but I'm so far downrange that Earth is curved five feet away from me. Right. So I keep the same distance above the earth, even though I'm falling towards the earth. This was the brilliant revelation of Isaac Newton back in 1687. Okay. God was kind of smart, I gotta give it to him. He was kind of smart. No. And Principia Mathematica, the mathematical, uh, uh, the full title is The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. It's just abbreviated Principia. A K is a C sound, it's the Latin hard C, mm -hmm. Principia. So. So, so there you have an orbit. If you do that within a few hundred miles, that orbit, to achieve that, you have to go about five miles per second, mm -hmm. okay? So in one second, the amount of distance you have fallen towards the Earth equals how far Earth's curvature has curved away from you. Gotcha. All right, so about five miles, it's, tw it's what is that? That's uh, 25, 15, uh, 12, carry the two, <laughs> uh, 18,000 miles an hour, okay? So if you go 18,000 miles, you will sustain orbit in this low section of Earth, of, of Earth orbital space, and we call it low Earth orbit. Spelling? Leo. Leo, all That's right. Leo. All right. Now, you wouldn't want to do that too low because you're moving within the atmosphere. Right, and, and you, you don't want to hit yourself in the back of the head. And you don't want to hit yourself in the back of the head. So, so you go <laughs> high enough so the atmosphere is thin enough so you can sustain this without the air dragging you back down to earth, okay? Right. So that for that, you gotta go up you know, at least 100, uh, 200 miles. Space station is orbiting 260 miles or so. The Hubble telescope is orbiting 350 miles or so. So that's all in the low earth orbit regime. If you do the math, 18,000 miles an hour, it takes about 90 minutes to complete an orbit. Nice. If you are in a spaceship at that altitude, at that speed, you will see how many, 18 sunrises and sunsets? Uh, so in a 24 hour period. Okay. So it's very cool, very cool. All right, so that's Leo. Go up a little higher. Okay, 
uh, 600,000 miles. It might go a little higher than that. You get middle Earth orbit. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with Tolkien. Just want to make that clear. <laughs> and Lord <laughs> of the Rings, right? Right. There are no middle Earth creatures orbiting the Earth that we know of. Mr. Frodo, <laughs> Mr. Frodo. <laughs> Stay with me. I'll get you to the satellite, I promise. <laughs> so, so a middle Earth orbit, those are all of our uh, GPS satellites are orbiting there, for example. Okay? Right. Right. So, the higher your orbit is, the longer it takes you to complete an orbit. Okay. Okay? Because you're moving slower and slower, and the distance is getting bigger and bigger. You know, the circumference of the your circumference. orbit. Right. All right. So... As you ascend, it'll take two hours, four hours, eight hours, 10 hours, 15 hours. You keep going. There is a magic distance Mm -hmm. where it will take you exactly as long to orbit the Earth as Earth takes to rotate. Wow. So it takes Earth 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds to make one full rotation on its axis. Okay. Find the distance where that's how long it takes you to make one orbit. And you will appear to hover over the oh, Earth. Oh, that's that's the most boring orbit of all. <laughs> Not getting anywhere. Who wants that orbit? Okay, it's the most boring, but it's the most it's the most useful orbit ever wow. conceived. Okay. And this was written down by Arthur C. Clarke in 1946, 1947. And it's where he said, now that we have rockets, because the war and the V2 got created, um, right in right in my back, you know, right out a couple of years ago, what are we going to do with these rockets now that we have them? And are we going to make satellites? If we do, imagine having a satellite in one of these orbits and parking it over the Atlantic between Europe and the United States. Then you can take a radio signal from Europe, beam it up to the satellite and send it back down to the United States and enable you to communicate across the curvature of Earth's round surface. That's uh, right. There you go. That's absolutely brilliant. Thus was born the communication satellite. And we were in in there early. Telstar was our first communication satellite. And we knew where to launch it and what it would do and how it would do it. And you and I are old enough to remember, you'd see news stories and it said, live via satellite. satellite. And you say, ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, satellite. That's yeah. some modern stuff going down there. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is um, geostationary orbit. So we just call it geo. That's how you get Leo, Mio, and geo. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, there's something else called geosynchronous orbit. Right. A geostationary orbit is a special case of a geosynchronous orbit. Mm-hmm. Because if you're synced with our rotation, you can have an orbit, for example, where you go around twice – in the exact time it takes Earth to rotate once, Mm -hmm. that's synchronized two to one, or three to one, or five to one. If you're synchronized in any way, you you get to call it geosynchronous. But if you wanna be parked, you have to be geostationary. Gotcha. And that's where they wanna put the space elevator. You might've heard of this, okay? Reducing the cost of access to orbit. Right. If you have a place parked over the Earth, why not just lower a rope and then climb up the rope? You don't need rockets. Well, that guy got an A in gym. <laughs> Climbing the rope. That's for sure. <laughs> so, by the way, I knew I was badass in gym when I can climb the rope without using my legs. Oh. So oh. you get upper body, enough upper body strength against your own body weight to do that. I said, wow. wow. Okay, okay, that's, uh, that's I'm ready. that is impressive. I'm, that's very I'm, Jean-Claude Van Damme of you. <laughs> 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 no, I did it because I had to. It was like part of the unit. But when John Claude does it, you know, he could use his legs. He chooses not to for, for the movie. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So the uh, point is, you when you're geostationary, you can park a platform up there, lower a rope, and just have elevators go back and forth. Leo is a couple hundred miles. Mio is a, a high hundreds into low thousands. And geostationary orbit is about 23,000 miles up. Ooh. I know. That's a long elevator that's, ride. That's a, I'm telling you right now, you better pack a lunch for that <laughs> elevator <laughs> and ride. You need, and you need really good elevator, space elevator music. 
<laughs> <laughs> Muzak for the yeah. stars. Yeah, not girl from Ipanema. <laughs> I know that, that ain't gonna work. The instrumental, yeah, right. the girl from Ipanema. <laughs> Is that on every elevator? Every, it's like the elevator cliche trope. You get in the elevator, ding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you have it. I don't know if you thought about it, ever cared about Leo, Mio, and Gio, but in addition to however you're fantasizing them to be sort of uh, collectors of money, <laughs> people who do and write by the shark loans, right? Exactly. Um, these are actual places in orbit around the earth. That's uh, so we just want to let you know that this is how it's going to work. Okay, and, Leo, and, Leo's going to come by for a minute. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and and and, uh, and, and Gio is going to be looking at you. We don't know where yeah. you are. Listen, Gio is always going to be here. Okay, <laughs> just in case you get any ideas. Okay, just know that uh, you know you might see Leo pass on. Okay, and uh, you know Mio might come by and stick around for a minute, but Gio, you'll never see him. But he's always looking. he's always always looking. <laughs> and, and and by the way, so that's where we put all the all the. The communication satellites, if right. you want to monitor one part of the Earth, you would put a satellite there. Right. And uh, by the way, if you were going to destroy a satellite for whatever reasons, it's happened three times on purpose. Oh. Okay. China did it first, then we did it. Then I think Russia did it. Some other, A third country did it. Our satellite that we destroyed was in, was in uh, Leo. Low enough so there's enough air molecules just to slow yeah, it slow down. Slow it down so I, that we can be dragged back down. And, to and if you slow down at all... It means you fell to a lower orbit where there's even more air molecules to slow you down even more. Right. So it's a, it's a runaway process. Right. To run away, collapse, and usually you drop them into the Atlantic Ocean, to the Pacific Ocean, uh, which contains one third of all the world's longitude. It's the big toilet bowl of, of satellite. So normally you do that if you were done with a satellite. You have a little bit of extra fuel to deorbit and drop yourself in the in the Pacific. But if you destroy a satellite, it's just fragments and you don't really control them. You just hope they burn up re-entering the atmosphere. Wow. Whereas the stuff that China did, it made a complete mess. And it's still the stuff is still up there and this happened like a decade ago. Wow. Yeah. You know what? See, people, this is what this is what happens. That's a decade or two decades. It's happened like Two thousand, early 2000s, I think. Wow. But, so things to consider as we move forward, thinking about space security, space as a backyard, space tourism, this all matters. Yeah, yeah. And there are more debris particles in those three orbits than there are satellites that are put there on purpose. So it's oh. quite the mess. And I joke that aliens did come by, wanted to land. They looked at the debris field. They said... Mm -hmm. No sign of intelligent life here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back. To Man, that was slobs. <laughs> it's total slobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Look at these people. Yeah, we're basically uh, the equivalent of having a car up on blocks on your front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we look like to aliens. Total slobs. That's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, that's all I got to tell you here on Leo, I, I, Gio, and Mio. I like it. I like right, it. Dude. The story of Leo, Mio, and Gio. You got uh, it. Yeah. Another the three wise men of, of, <laughs> of our planetary orbits. Orbits. So, this has been another Star Talk Explainer. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Always good to have you, Chuck. Always a pleasure. All right. As always, keep looking up. <laughs>